Hey, welcome to the Christ Revealed YouTube channel. I got a great interview coming up for you. Really great to be here with you. Enjoy this interview. So, and this is, again, you know, uh, I, I mentioned this earlier, but I think it bears um, mentioning again here. It's not like saying, hey, I kind of just feel this in my heart, therefore I'm following this path. Yeah. It's really quite the opposite of that, but what's, what I find fascinating is that culturally, and, and, and I wonder if you had the same context before you became a Christian, it's the idea that people who would adopt this faith, who would, who would become Christians, are people who had to uh, subjugate uh, their rational faculties to a feeling they have inside. Yeah. In your case, it's, it, you, you keep coming at it by a, a chain of logic that says that this is the best explanation for all of this well, stuff. You know, I, I do envy, though, people who are not always wrestling with these ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, I, there are people I know who have been Christians for as long as they can remember, and uh, they are true Christian brothers and sisters who love God, love Jesus, are saved, and have experiences of their faith that I envy. Because for me, it's just the copy of me that always says, really? <laughs> you know, because if you believe everybody, if you believe every feeling that's out there, you, no one goes to jail. You just, you just bump around from one feeling to another. It's, it's, it's doubting everyone. It's doubting everything that's ever said to you that eventually ends up in someone going to jail. It's suspicion, constantly being suspicious, never just allowing yourself to feel that stuff. And that's why a lot of the, the cops you, you meet who've been doing this for 25 years, it can, it can hurt you, it can change you. Um, so I didn't know any other way right. to believe this or anything else. I couldn't feel my way into this because that's just not what we do. And, and I, have no, I have no interest in that. I often say I'm not a Christian because it works for me. Because I'll be honest, it doesn't work for me. I don't think it works for anybody really if, if, if they would really analyze it. Is, is this the easiest life you could ever... Uh, no. It's easy to throw the dart on the wall and just draw the bullseye around wherever the dart lands. Okay? It's much harder to have the bullseye there first. And for the years that I was not a Christian, I was the only God that Jim ever had. So if you ask Jim, how's your day going? How's your, how's your year? It's great. Well, who's, by whose standard? By, by mine. <laughs> I'm the only standard I have to meet. Right. You know, it, it's hard to be a hypocrite when no one really knows your fuzzy standard that always moves back and forth because it's your standard is you. It's easy to call out the hypocrite when the standard is incredibly high and public. So I would expect everyone who is a Christian to eventually be called out as a hypocrite. Well, first of all, we're all hypocrites, but no one is as public a hypocrite as the Christian because everyone knows our standard. It's this Jesus of Nazareth standard. Oh my gosh, forget about it. I'm always going to fail according to that standard. I can't even hold up. I disagree with myself half the time. How am I going to hold up to that standard? But I, I think that the years before I was a Christian were in some ways uh, easier years to live, more convenient years to live. I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm not going to put myself last. I'm not, I was always in the first position. It was all about me. Uh, now I'm called to something different, the more difficult life, the life that says that stuff doesn't matter, the stuff that we're kind of told by the culture we should chase, the stuff we should chase, careers, houses, properties, the perfect relationships. These are things now that have been put on their ear, that have been turned upside down. Now I see the proper role. What am, I, what am I called to be? Who am I called to be? What really matters? Do you have a temporary perspective that talks about how good will this year be? Or do I have an eternal perspective that really measures things in light of eternity? It's a very different way to live. And I think it's counterintuitive. Yeah. And it's difficult. So it doesn't always work. If what you mean by work is that you're going to have your best life now. You're going to have, your, you know, you're going to have the, the best a year you could possibly have. Well, this is not what Jesus called us to. You, you see it all the time in Scripture. Hey, hey, they're already coming after me. Guys, <laughs> you're next. You think they're coming after, they're going to come after you too. Uh, this, you got to pick this cross and carry it. This is it's going to be the same for all of you. Don't, this is not an easy life. Get ready to, to lose it all. And unless you're willing to say, I will lose it all, you can't be part of this because you'll always be holding on to something you're going to call God instead of God. And so I realized this, I'm not a Christian because it works in that sense, or because I was raised in a Christian family because I wasn't, or because I really was hoping for heaven or afraid of hell because those things just don't animate me, mm -hmm. um, or because I had this train wreck I was trying to, to correct, get back on the rails, because I didn't have a bad, I had a great life before. I actually think that in, in some ways this is harder because the stuff I used to celebrate, once I realized that 
God existed and that Jesus did this for me, mm -hmm. I now sometimes still struggle with sin, still struggle with my sinful nature. The only difference is that now I wrestle with it because I know this, the Spirit is kind of woken up. We talk about being woke. Uh, yeah, I'm woke in the sense that I, I know what is right and wrong in a way before. I, I defined right and wrong before. Now I realize that's not my definition. It's harder to live this life, especially in a culture that is more and more hostile mm. toward the, the, the teaching of Jesus. And, and the, the true fact is it's not going to get any better. People will say, oh, I, I, don't like, I don't mind Jesus. It's Christians or it's Christianity. Well, okay, you can't love Jesus and hate his teaching. Mm. And what we have right now is a culture that sometimes says they love Jesus, but not all of his teaching. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're going we to be faithful, and what helps me to be faithful is knowing that it's true. Let me put it to you this way. I think it's clear. I had a case years ago where a guy was uh, in a bulletproof vest. We all wear bulletproof vests. We know they stop bullets because we've seen them stop bullets in the range. So we wear these in every shift under our, our uh, shirts. And one day he pulls over this drunk driver, and the drunk driver gets out of the car, and the drunk driver had a gun in his waistband, and the officer didn't know it, and the drunk driver decided that day he was going to kill the officer. So he pulled his gun out, and he pointed it at the officer. And the officer was just far enough away, he couldn't do a gun takeaway, he couldn't do anything. He stood there, and he told me afterwards, because I'm working officer-involved shootings at the time, he, he told me afterwards, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't, I thought about a couple of options in that split second. I could duck behind the car, I could hit the deck, I could just charge him. But I decided instead because I knew I was wearing my vest, just to take the first couple of rounds and get my own gun out and get involved in the gunfight. And I thought when I heard that story, wow, that's a guy who doesn't just have belief that, mm -hmm. he has belief in, because he's about to trust that vest to do what he knows it can do. And, and the only reason why he's doing that, I think, is because like me, he has seen that vest stop bullets. Mm -hmm. So why do I continue to take this approach toward my Christian faith? Because if you know the vest can stop bullets, can answer every objection, you're far more likely to stand calmly in the battle. And what's really great about it is it affects your character. Hmm. So there's, you, you ever notice how chihuahuas are really noisy? Yeah. They're constantly barking. You get them in a yard full of dogs, they think they have to constantly like puff up and be the big dog in the yard because they're so small, right? Meanwhile, a Great Dane walks in the yard, doesn't make a noise, just walks and he owns the yard from the time he steps in. Well, what happens if we don't see Christianity as the big worldview that can hold up to the, the battle, we're going to be like chihuahuas, always barking, always hoping that somebody will think that we're bigger than we are. Mm -hmm. If we saw that this thing can stop bullets, then in that gunfight we're just going to stand still and be calm. I don't need to overreact. He didn't overreact. Mm -hmm. He didn't panic. Mm -hmm. He just said, okay, tonight I'm trusting the vest. And he only got there because he had good evidence to support his belief that the vest would stop bullets. So I think that's why I really hope that all of us, as we kind of examine evidence, that we, number one, have more confidence, two, allow it to change our character in the challenge, and three, we have moved from belief that to believe in. That's it for this particular interview. Thanks for joining me. Really excited to take this ongoing journey with you as we keep bringing more content. If you haven't already, you really should subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of phenomenal content coming down the road into the future that you'll want to know about. Leave a comment down here. I think people would love to hear from you and then you can hear from them too. If you liked it, go ahead and give a like. It only takes half a second and share this with people that you care about. The world needs more light in it right now. So thanks for being with me. Hope to connect with you again soon. Thank you.